Welcome everyone uh, to this session on, um, on the business value of Tech for Good programs. Um, delighted to be joined by a, a, an incredible panel. I think we're waiting on one more, so they'll, they'll sneak in surreptitiously uh, during, during the session. Um, as we've seen Tech for Good programs expand dramatically over the last couple of years, it's become increasingly important for businesses to engage um, in, 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 that, in that area of our society. So I'm really looking forward to where the chat will take us today. Um, I'm Stephen Greer. I'm the uh, Director of Devolved Government at Microsoft, where I've been for 24 years, big old shift. Um, and I'm going to be hosting and steering us with questions in, in the right direction. Um, but at the risk of uh, dating, dating myself, um, and in the, in the famous words of Scylla Black, I'm going to ask my panel to say um, who you are and where you come from. <laughs> uh, I'm Laura Cashy. Is that working? Yeah, it is. I'm Laura Cashy, and I'm from a company called BGSS. Um, we're an IT consultancy company, and we've been working with Tech for Good for just over a year now. It's been fantastic. Uh, I've been with BGSS for six years, um, and I've aged about 20 years in that time. But it's been great, really. Brilliant. That was good timing. Yeah, so <laughs> make doors, an entrance, Silka. The, the doors take a little longer to open uh, in the bathrooms, if you didn't notice. My name is Silk Patel, and I am the social value manager at Lidos UK, and also I'm the founder of Scotland Technology uh, Women in Tech, uh, which is a non-for-profit organisation. And I'm wearing an electric blue blazer. Definitely don't describe myself as middle-aged. I'm feeling good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so I'm Simon Holden. Uh, I work for Ant Digital, uh, and I look after our Scotland and Yorkshire-based business. Uh, and we've been working with SDA for, I think, two years. Two years. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So I'm Susie Bell, and I am the engineering community lead at Lloyds Banking Group. Um, we have recently joined the Tech for Good Alliance, so sort of starting out in our journey and, and very excited. Brilliant. Thank you, panel. Um, let's go on with the first question, uh, which we'll take right across the panel, and then we'll probably filter some questions as we're a wee bit, a tiny bit behind schedule. Um, but starting with you, Laura, how important do you feel Tech for Good programmes are for your organisation, and what do you think the high level value is for business? Okay. So it's been pretty amazing, actually, and I'll, I'll go into some of the details. Um, we've been doing Tech for Good um, within the BGSS office in Scotland only, and we kind of trialled it over the last year, but it's been had such an impact, we've decided to roll it out enterprise-wide across the business. So we wouldn't be doing that if we hadn't seen some value. Um, but the value is multiple. I, th there's just so many good aspects of it. It's capability building. Um, we have had um, some of our more junior um, developers learn new skills, maybe React, iOS, Swift, Kotlin, that kind of things, as a result of taking part all in a, a Tech for Good project. And as a result, they became billable on a client side. That's what we do. We're a consultancy company. Th those people would not have landed in those organizations if they hadn't. I think the other thing that's been great is we've allowed people to cross-train. So we had a, a tester. Um, who wanted to be a delivery manager, and we gave him a Tech for Good project to manage, and now he's a delivery manager and another client engagement. So there's some real business value there. But I think cultural value is really important as well. So um, we've got people who, you know, it, the IT market's been crazy for the last three years. It's maybe a wee bit quieter now. But, you know, because of things like Tech for Good, we're sticky. Um, because they loved being part of that. You know, it's not just about the job that they're doing just now. It's about that culture of being part of an organisation that gives back to the local community. And they may not get that elsewhere. And there's so much more, but I think I better hand over to some of the other panellists. So from our perspective, um, Lidos is actually currently in the process of onboarding. So I don't have the project specifics yet, but what I can talk about is the, the rationale behind why LIDOS are, are looking at this partnership. The kind of work that we do from a technology perspective is often with public sector bodies like the Home Office, Scottish Government, Scottish Parliament, MOD. And these projects span over five, ten years. And so we have to be able to upskill our technology working force up and down according to the work that's coming in or the pipeline that's coming in. That often means that we will have technologists on the bench 
for periods of time, and we want to be able to make sure that they've got good, sustainable work to keep them engaged in the company to retain the talent, but also that they're adding value to using their skills and developing as well. So this is exactly the type of program that then provides the ROI and the sustainability from a social value impact perspective. It's always hard when it goes further down the line and everyone said the good stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it is important and it's kind of probably less spoken about. I think we all understand the intrinsic value of what it does and why it's important. Uh, but to try and put it and articulate it into a business case, I think it's harder and sometimes feels a bit more awkward. But I do think it's powerful. So I, I would actually echo the, the, all the points in terms of allowing, whether it's junior staff uh, or staff moving into a different role, to have that practice in a safer environment, as we heard on the kind of previous panel, uh, exploring different tech stacks that they might not do in, the, in their client-facing work that might be more innovative or, or, or greenfield, which is exciting. Having a purpose when they're in between paid client work and actually doing that, that valuable work that they can see the tangible value, I think, is powerful. And then something which I kind of debated about sharing or not, but it's the network and the brand. So, you know, us being in this room with all of you today is really powerful. Alistair talking about all of our different companies in terms of what we've done together is really valuable and, and does have um, value for the business beyond all the great stuff that it actually does on the ground. Um, so I think for us, as we were sort of kicking off, I think you know the, the two key things which kind of have been covered that just to sort of restate is the, the learning opportunities that it's going to give our, our engineers. Um, you know, here at Lloyd's, we're really on this sort of drive to build our learning culture, and it's it's really difficult, you know, to get people that time um, away from their day job, to get that time prioritised. But, but through having something structured, where we can say, you've, you've got this time, and you're going to spend it on, you know, this great project, which is also going to help you grow your skills, I think it's really, really, really invaluable. Um, and that, as a community lead, um, one of the things that I'm sort of concerned about is creating this, this community vision and this feeling of belonging and, and sense of sort of, you know, being part of something bigger. And I think this plays into it really well um, because it makes people feel valued that they're getting this time and it gives them that motivation as well that's really key. Yeah, those are really fantastic answers. And what I've loved about them is that We've touched on culture, we've touched on value, we've touched on the importance to the individuals and the impact of the project. So yeah, I'm really, um, really inspired by that. Um, again, it can be hard for organisations to choose which Tech for Good programmes to get involved with. How, how do you choose as an organisation what, what makes it attractive for you? How do you find them? Do you think that's a challenge? Who's going yeah. first? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't go first because I went first last time. Um, so I, I do think there, so but doing this a year, we've done five projects. Three, I think, have been huge successes and two, probably less so. And I think that comes back to experience of working with Tech for Good and understanding what projects will suit your business, but what charities will be able to work at the pace that you can work as well. So whilst this is a volunteering initiative, um, some businesses have to go at pay, or some charities or third sector have to go at pay, so they've got deadlines to it. And actually, at that time, the one project, we just didn't have enough people available because we were so busy with work that we could go at their pace. We did lots of good things for them, but in the end, they actually went out and um, uh, purchased or, 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 or um, brought a contractor in to, to finish off the work. Um, the other one for us that wasn't such a huge success was the, the pace that the organisation were going at was too slow. So we just couldn't get any traction and our teams were sitting around sort of twiddling their thumbs. It would have been great because it was a, it was a Microsoft Dynamics project. Um, <laughs> and and we all, everybody knows that Stevie works for Microsoft. So you he would can, have been You can pleased. run your business from that stuff, you know. <laughs> um, um, and, and it would have just built um, more experience in, in, in that area. But, uh, but it is great when it works really, really well. And I think in terms of choosing it, it's about... Do what you do in a normal project, understand your stakeholders, understand the deadlines and, and timescales, the outcomes that they're trying to achieve. And if you can do all of those things and manage it like a project, it works. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
just to build on that, I think mm -hmm. it's very similar to paid work. So, so we have clients, we, we charge. It, it, it's very sim it, not very simple. It's hard to find that. You know, it, mm -hmm. closing, shaping, closing, paid work is hard. I think doing that in this in this side is even harder mm -hmm. um, because I think often we're all a bit polite about what's the right thing to do or how can we help um, and so on. So I haven't been asked to do this, but a shameless plug. I think the Scottish Tech Army is really helpful in that scenario because it's a it's a matchmaker it's it's a one to many they understand our values what we want um what we're trying to achieve and and how we can really help and then they set us up with yeah. great options yeah. uh, and so far each of them have been brilliant options uh, and we've moved forward so one assumes it's very easy to go and find. You can go, right, okay, we're ready for business. Who wants us yeah. to help them? Yeah. Uh, but it's not quite so straightforward. Yeah. Uh, and actually, so I think the STA provides a brilliant service in that. Uh, and I think, yeah, that's very helpful. Yep. Cool. Um, I'm just going to add on to that. So I think for us, um, the challenge is sort of around finding the right format within Lloyd's for sort of moving forward with the project. So. For example, last year um, we took one of the, it was like the homeless host um, project and we used it as a challenge at a big hackathon event that we ran. So basically one day with all these hack teams working to sort of you know, generate a solution. And while it was, I think it was fantastic for the hackers, um, for the engineers, because they loved being part of um, this challenge that was for good, I think that the format of that hackathon um, didn't maybe work towards producing something that in the end could actually be used by the charity, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I think we just need to think really carefully about how we move forward with ideas. Yeah, I love that story as well. And I think particularly, Simon, the, the power of partnership and finding the right opportunities as you, as you reflect on as well. Um, and obviously using um, SDA as a, as a great example. Yep. I'm um, thinking perhaps, um, Silka, about culture how do you, um, you know, how, in terms of tech for good, how do we get to a position where, for example, it's a brilliant talent retention mechanism, for example, within a company? How do you get it to the point where it's an attractive selling place for, for individuals to come and work for you? Mm -hmm. um, so if you think about what people are looking for when they're entering the world of work, uh, particularly a corporate environment, it, yes, there's the day job element, but there's the value add. Uh, and especially nowadays, if you look at the younger workforce, the graduate market, we talk about sustainability, we talk about ESG, social value, and there's impacts. Those are becoming higher and higher up the list of their care abouts. And so it's no good organizations just saying, this is the job and this is the job for life. That actually doesn't exist anymore. So you're leading with your credentials on social value, and this is exactly the type of initiatives that makes your organization sticky, because they can see that they can be part of more than just the environment of the corporate world that you may be providing. They have their own care abouts, and they'll have their own values and beliefs, and hopefully they'll align to your company values and beliefs. And if you're saying that you partner with charities, you're creating an impact in their local environment, in their local communities, through these <coughs> opportunities to volunteer and give back, then that's going to create that sticky staff retention piece. Yeah. But then you're adding on that you're going to get the opportunity to develop your skills as well, your technical skills as well as your uh, people management skills, your ability to work with different types of teams. Because if you think about a person who's just joining a company, one of the fear factors is the lack of confidence because they don't know the people, they don't know the processes, they don't know the systems. But if you're creating safe environments where they're also nurturing and growing yeah. whilst doing the day job, it's a win-win. Yep, love that. Yep, go ahead. I came across a really tangible example yesterday, so I was trying to look at what, how does this stick. And I was in our Glasgow office um, yesterday, working away, and uh, I was just kind of, I started to daydream, and I looked around the walls. And our Glasgow office does some great client work, loads of client work, awesome. The only two pictures on the wall were of their social value work that they've done. Brilliant. And so that maybe was 5% of actually what they've done over the last three, four years but that's what they chose to put on the wall and celebrate. And that cultural, that really kind of 
to all your points in terms of the cultural fabric of and the, and the pride of that just came it just I thought it was interesting in terms of that's what they had chosen to showcase and put up on the wall. Yeah, fantastic. Um, question for you, Laura, on the more on the, the, the hard graft of commercials and social value. So there's a there's a um, oh, I, I t calling it a tendency is the wrong word, but there's a, a real direction forming, particularly with the public sector in response to tenders that they will actually include a social value clause. So if you are going to bid for this piece of work as a big organisation, what is it that you're going to deliver outside of the scope of the actual project in terms of value to um, society, the local area, however they choose to phrase it? How have you been thinking about that when, when it's that cold, hard deadline on a Friday, the tender's due at five, it's Christmas Eve? <laughs> <laughs> and that always happens, by the way. <laughs> um, so, so I think I think there's a couple aspects of that, right? So yes, the social value things become such a big thing in bids, but actually culturally, um, it's always been quite embedded in BGSS anyway. So tech for good is just one of the many social value things we do. Um, so we've always managed to respond in those sections fairly well. I think the good thing with tech for good though is, in some respects, it can be quite easy to say it, when you're doing a bid that we're going to take on. X number of projects, we're going to develop these number of skills, we're going to give this social value back to the third sector, and I think that can look really good in a bid, but it's quite simple for us to come up with ideas um, to support those bids, and I think Tech for Good helps with that. Brilliant. If I can build on that, absolutely, absolutely. agree. Um, it is a minimum 10% weighting. So before it was loosely, you know, can you, can you describe something and organisations were potentially doing copy and paste marketing text and tick box exercising. So it's forcing the hand now. So the culture has changed and developed. But where I see rubber hitting the road is around data. I am a data girl and whenever you speak to me, I will always talk to you about ROI and investments. Because if you want to continue to add value, you've got to be able to measure it. And this is where Tech for Good have got the right model in place so that you can then make the business justifications back into the business, say this is the value you're adding. And that then takes your bid from 80% response to 100% response. Brilliant, thanks. I think we've got time for one more, so we'll start at the, 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 the other end this time. And a very open question then, what, what do you think the future is for Tech for Good programmes? And that can be in your own organisation or, or more broadly, what are your aspirations as, a, as an organisation? Yeah, I mean, we're really excited. I mean, like I said, we're just sort of starting out. Um, and I think one of the, sort of the key things that I'm thinking about and we're thinking about um, as we look to move forward is how we can sort of use it to really bring together people across the organisation. So obviously, you know, Lloyd's is a large organisation. We have thousands of engineers and we now have people working out in India um, as our, part of our Lloyd's Technology Centre. So it's like, how can we use something like this to actually bring these people together, learn from each other and really create a culture um, of, of doing this sort of thing for good that, that, that we can then take forward in the future. Brilliant. I think I'd build on that in terms of the positivity. I think there is um, there is much more awareness around the impact on our communities. There's much more commitment made to purpose. Um, there's much more accessibility in terms of through these types of events and organisations, and there's more momentum. So I do think it is building, and I think that's really, really positive. I don't think we can be complacent. We have to commit, and we have to add energy and keep driving, but I do think it's building in a very positive way. Fantastic. I think you've got to keep up with the momentum of, of technology and through the program, you've got to be able to demonstrate how you're adding value and continuing to build on that. It's no longer good enough to say we've got this one program that's covering across the whole of the UK. It's about societal impact, going back to that social justice piece. So transactional value is not going to have any value. Saying that you've got a budget to support a charity and then you just hand a check over, it's not about that. It's a two-way partnership. You've got to build in the collaboration, demonstrate how you're working together and then actually drive for change. So, so um, I said earlier on that we just have expanded the Tech for Good programme to the whole of the UK, but I think in terms of the outcome for me is 
one of the things that's been really great in Scotland is it's that actually it's not came from the leadership, the projects they've picked, the projects they've done. It's came from the team themselves. And if we can replicate that through the whole of BGSS and give value back to the third sector, that's the perfect thing for me. That's the future. Yeah, that's the future. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, panel. Any closing remarks from anyone before we, uh, we say our final thanks and goodbyes? Anybody, anything else to, to add? No? I would just say thanks to Kirsty and Alistair and uh, Joanna and everybody Absolutely. because they do a fantastic job. Simon mentioned sort of the work that they do pre-work before we get the projects to, to try and align as nicely and support us during the engagement. Um, and, you know, even just all the introductions we get to other organisations and networks, I think it's an amazing success and those guys deserve a big round of applause. Absolutely, Brilliant, yes. Well done, you well, guys. Well, let's have that round of applause at the same time for our amazing panel. Thank you.